Hello and welcome to the countdown of the five worst or the 31 films I reviewed over the month of October. When I said yesterday that I fared kind of well with my selection for the Halloween Marathon, what I was really meant to say was at least they weren't all as shit as this. The majority was nothing to shout about, but Jesus. Special shout out goes to Sickle or The Slaughterhouse Massacre, such a poorly produced film but the graphic TNA was just enough to shoo it away from this list. So, here we are now. My thoughts as I count down the five worst films of my 2016 Halloween Marathon. Number five, The Last Seven. For the first five minutes, The Last Seven seemed like it was going to be a good movie, what with the impressive empty streets of Landon and all that. This is why it's only five. As for the other 75 minutes though, well, that's why it's five. All the characters are thick, arrogant fuckheads, and of course, with its TV movie budget, the film's narrative revolves mostly around them, unquote, individuals whom slasher fans would have problems digesting. The central mystery and the plot twists are also awful, and seem only to be there just for the fuck of it. There is no passion here. There is no enthusiasm. It's fucking lazy TV standard Britsploitation 101. No one really wanted it, no one really wanted to make it, a total waste of people's time and money. Press on features. At least we talk a good game. You can. Number four, The Nightcomers. Originally, I gave this a pass, but as time has gone on, this film has grown on me, like a cancer. The film's god awful acting now begins to haunt me, and as I reflect more so, the cynicism within Winner's direction becomes oh so more apparent. The camera work is lazy and uninspired. Brando is given near free reign, and a good moment out of him always seemed coincidental and without purpose. And finally, the gothic atmosphere is painfully forced. Not even once are you fooled into thinking the supernatural might be at play, which they suggest with utmost pointlessness. The Nightcomers feels very much like it sleepwalked its way into existence, much like The Last Seven, but at least The Last Seven didn't feature uncomfortably ambiguous sadomasochistic sex scenes staged by a director who, at best, has a relationship with sexual violence that can be described as watermark. Miserable film. Number three. Bloodshot. This most confusing and obnoxious effort has to be one of the worst films that I've seen Dyer in so far. It thinks it's smarter than its audience and it fails miserably at that. Dyer's performance is only passable and yet it manages to be the best in the film. Bloodshot's characters are too annoying and or despicable to be engaging and that's pretty much where the film's problems end and begin. I was sidetracked by the film's meta, for lack of a better word, commentary on horror films, to think that the film could be doing more than trying to be a half-baked psychological drama, but any suggestion of dream logic being at play would be undeserving. Bloodshot is self-indulgent, pretentious, and unrelatable to near anyone who wasn't involved with bringing it into existence, all round a petty, piss-poor effort. You know what Bloodshot has that champion killer didn't? A budget! Barely resembling a film, let alone a horror title, Champion Killer near made me give up the ghost on day one. The acting would be laughable if it was present, the special effects are beyond pathetic, and the narrative is not even original. It's the first Dirty Harry film funded with what might have been the equivalent of that production's catering budget. How this film got released outside of the state of California, let alone over here, will perhaps forever remain a depressing enigma. I want my 50p back! And number one, Probably no surprise to whoever heard my review of both cuts of Uli Lamel's Boogeyman 2. Whether it was the lethargic 80s original or the non-entity that was the 2002 director's cut, I'll be damned if I'll find another paycheck in Lamel's filmography that could come close to equating to the cynical, cheap-ass, drizzling piss that is 2002 and 1981's Boogeyman 2. You know what Champion Killer has that either Boogeyman 2 doesn't? The will to live. At least Champion Killer's shit was all originally shot, I use the term original loosely. Both Boogeyman 2 cuts, especially the 2002 cut, is made up of three quarters of footage from the first Boogeyman, which I kinda like, I admit. So Boogeyman 2's position is more to do with intent rather than content. It would be a Christmas miracle to find a more transparent cash grab than Boogeyman 2 read DUH! 8% original feature, 2% the actual film it proclaims to be a director's cut of, and 90% the original Boogeyman, but 100% a filmic abortion that no self-respecting filmmaker would attach their name to. 
Throughout his career, Lamel has lived off the fumes of his past glories, all four of them, and has made it very easy for people to forget that he directed the best Fassbender film never made by Fassbender, Tenderness of the Wolves. The fact that I know Lamel is capable of giving a fuck only makes these desperate, desperate commercial products of his only all the more insulting. Well, that was wonderful. Thanks for listening. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. Expect to see more from me soon. Cheerio!